What's up guys, uh, this is mstar183 I'm gonna be showing you how to make an iPhone uh, cut from the beginning to the end uh, Please uh, keep up with me, I actually am speeding up this uh, video up to 90% So if, uh, if I go too fast I apologize but I want to make this video quick and easy for you guys um, So pretty much you're gonna go to uh, Google, you're gonna Google iPhone specs uh, if you Google this, uh, it will give you some measurements, but these measurements are not the best measurements to go by. This is my mistake. So actually, you want to do is you want to go and Google iPhone Cat. This uh, website will actually give you uh, the same uh, measurements from the uh, uh, from Apple. They're the um, exact measurements for iPads, iPhones, and stuff. As you can see, it will give you the exact measurements of every single part of the phone, which is very useful when you are modeling or you are checking your measurements. Then you go to shapeways.com. Uh, you go. The measurements are a little uh, a bit off in different programs. Uh, actually, my my program says that uh, four um, four inches actually one inch or something like that. So it's off. So uh, you have to calculate it. So I set mine up to millimeters, and uh, <clears throat> I made a measurement square that actually is uh, 0.4. It tells me that um, that 0.4 is one millimeter when you import into that website. So this is square right here is going to be your measurement. This is what you're going to use to uh, measure your thickness because in order to get something pre printed, it has to be at least one millimeter thick. Um, I'm gonna go back to this, but pretty much you want to have one millimeter all the way around your phone. You want to have um, one consistent measurement or uh, one millimeter or higher. I already pretty much set up this uh, model. I made, I took the uh, back face off. As you can see, uh, it's acting a little weird. Weird is because the uh, face is not all together. It's not uh, sealed correctly. So you actually extrude it at once and take all the other walls off. And now this time it will extrude correctly. As you can see, now you can uh, make it a little bigger, uh, just not too big. Um, I put it usually around halfway through the button. Then uh, you screw it one more time. Over here, we're going to actually make the uh, groove part that keeps your phone from falling out of your iPhone case. Uh, like I said, you, pretty much you got to screw it out again, and screw it out again until you have this nice little groove that's going to keep your iPhone from falling out. Then uh, we're actually going to go back and create uh, one of those uh, square measurements again to uh, check our thickness all the way around the model. Again, you are going to select the, uh, the edge all the way around and then you're going to screw it out one more time. Now with our measurement, we're going to make sure that our, measure, that our side is at least one millimeter thick. It is a little bit more than a millimeter thick, which is actually okay. So you actually want to go and check the back wall. I'm actually going to fix this back wall because it's not a, uh, it's not it's not next to the wall, the back wall. So once you put that wall, then you select that edge. Then is one you make sure it's one uh, inch millimeter thick. Then you screw it out one more time, and then you join all those points into one point that makes one back wall. It closes your model. It's uh, actually watertight right now. I actually already modeled these uh, little things that you're gonna use to uh, boolean out uh, to pretty much make holes into your model. Uh, I'm gonna this uh, have this is the uh, the the one that for the uh, speaker on the bottom. This is the other one uh, for the uh, middle part. This is for the bu uh, top button. This is for the side button. This is for the head jack. And as you can see, now you have a pre pretty much perfect iPhone case. I'm actually going to take a little step further. I'm going to show you how to make a pocket. Uh, pre oh, actually, I forgot to make uh, the uh, the hole for the camera. So I'm going to show you how to make uh, a little model right here to uh, use it as to make a hole. You make a circle, you screw the faces out, then you make a, a smaller use for so enough for the for the flash to go by. Now you and then you're gonna fix the uh, the the walls. Then you're gonna screw it out. And now you have a perfect hole for your camera. So um, like I said, uh, you gotta clean those uh, edges. Uh, there's you're gonna clean those other edges over here. And I, what I don't know what I did this part right here. I actually uh, made a hole. Uh, for my uh, wallet, but that's not the correct way to make it because it will act all weird. So actually, after thinking about it, I actually made a square, and then I actually uh, use it to uh, inter like to join into one object. I think I use uh, intersection, but don't quote me on that. Then uh, you're gonna use the bottom wall. You're gonna make it a little smaller. Uh, then you're gonna uh, put it right against the back wall. 
and then you're gonna screw it one time and one more time and you need that extra a set of vertices to uh, actually uh, clean that hole out as you can see now you're gonna use that hole you're gonna screw those edges you're gonna join those vertices and then you're gonna um, <clears throat> Uh, you know merge those vertices together so it's actually airtight again airtightness is very critical as you can see it's all one point now it's all airtight uh, <clears throat> then uh, all you have to do is make sure that it's uh, straight uh, I'm gonna fix the thickness in the walls because you can see it's a little bit more than a millimeter thick that'll be okay but I actually don't wanna pay that much material so I'm pretty cheap so I'm actually going to clean that hole uh, by joining the vertices. There you go. There's no hole anymore. And actually, I'm going to uh, triangulate this uh, object. I'm going to export this an OBJ. I'm going to open it up in MeshLab. MeshLab has a little nice tool that checks for holes in your model. This is going to save your life so many times because uh, the uh, websites that you get printed stuff doesn't like holes in your model. Then I'm actually going to check for thickness to make sure that my whole model is one millimeter all the way around. I usually go to scopetail.com, I upload my model, and then I have this little feature that checks for solidity. Um, it will show you with the red parts which parts are not that thick enough. Uh, I kind of knew that those walls weren't that thick, but uh, it's okay with me. You can go back and fix it if you, uh, if you uh, see a really red part. Uh, then you upload your model, you uh, pretty much select what material you want to pick and you want to get it printed on. Then you uh, put in your card and then you buy your model and then you're done. Then you wait like two weeks and then you get it on the mail. So I hope you guys like it. Uh, I'm sorry I was so quick and uh, hope you, hopefully you guys uh, learned something.